Welcome to Postscript from Faithbridge Church. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the message by sitting down with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to Postscript. I'm Luann Riley, Grow Group Director, and I'm here with Ben Stewart, who just gave us a very timely message on anxiety, um, as we found looking at Philippians today. Um, you touched on it briefly, but let's just um, ask a little bit more about it. You talked about when you're, you begin to look at the root of anxiety, um, you can often find a disbelief or maybe not a full trust in God. Can you speak to that yeah. a little bit? Yeah. I mean. Jesus is very direct about it in Luke 12. You know, it, it's a long section where he's telling his disciples, don't be anxious about what you're going to wear, what you're going to eat, anything like that. And he said, because the Gentiles do that. What he means by that is people that don't know God, they worry about that kind of stuff. And he said, but your father knows you need it. And so the perspective he's given believers is if, if you've come to know Jesus Christ, you're, you're called adopted as a son. So God is your dad. And so to not believe he's going to care for you is to declare to the world and to God, you're not a good dad. And that's why Jesus says later, oh, you of little faith. Mm -hmm. Like he tells them, your anxiety is the presenting issue. The deep underlying issue is you don't think God is trustworthy uh, or will take care of you. So your anxiety is a declaration to the world that God is not worthy of your trust. And that's why to Jesus, anxiety was serious. Right. And he's presenting this to disciples that he expected would die. He says, you're going to face uh, trials that will end in your condemnation. And the people that really trust God can be peaceful, even in the midst of craziness like that, injustice like that, because I believe God's taking care of me. And that doesn't mean I don't have an argument with this way things are going or want to change that or whatever. But at the end of the day, I, I trust God. And uh, so for me, when I'm anxious about something, I go, what is it that I fear I'm going to lose or fear I'm going to not get? And do I think God's not going to take care of me? I ask myself those questions because that is the root issue. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So we had a question come in, um, someone interested in learning more about um, and reading more, uh, the kind mm -hmm. of books that you're reading and right. reference today. Um, some biographies of people who have lived out Philippians 4. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, George Mueller is who I mentioned, you know, and uh, he's great. Um, it's funny, I, I thought y'all planted that, but you did it. It's funny because I, I wanted to quote so bad uh, one biography I love and didn't get to, and it's a guy by the name of John Patton. I think I've mentioned him here before. Patton was the minister to the New Hebrides, you know, and he went back in the day wife and child died on the island from disease while he's trying to minister to cannibals who are trying to kill him. And so you read his book and it's like an action novel, but it's also a journal. It's him writing it and he's writing about how he interacted with the Lord and how he trusted God through it. And it's so powerful. But there's one line I wanted to read, if you're okay with this. Yeah. This is from his autobiography. He was in his little hut that he had built and these guys told him, hey, these people are coming to kill you because that was kind of the norm for him. And they said, so you need to go climb this tree. But the people telling him that were a little suspect too. So he's like, I don't trust any of you people. I don't know what to do, but I can't stay in the house. So he gets out of there and he's literally, he's in this tree and this is what he wrote. Being entirely at the mercy of such doubtful and vacillating friends, I though perplexed felt it best to obey. I climbed into the tree and was left there alone in the bush. The hours I spent there live all before me as if it were but of yesterday. I heard the frequent discharging of muskets, the yells of the savages. Yet I sat there among the branches as safe as in the arms of Jesus. Never in all my sorrows did my Lord draw nearer to me and speak more soothingly in my soul than when the moonlight flickered among the chestnut leaves and the night air played on my throbbing brow as I told all my heart to Jesus. Alone, yet not alone. If it be to glory, my God, I would not grudge to spend many nights alone in such a tree, to feel again my Savior's spiritual presence, to enjoy his consoling fellowship. And then he talks to the reader. If thus thrown back upon your own soul, alone, all alone, in the midnight, in the bush, in the very embrace of death itself, have you a friend that will not fail you then? 
And uh, so he writes his story, but it's also a sermon of this is how God cared for me. This is how he led my life and the impact I got to have. When you're alone in the darkness, do you have a friend you can lean on like that? So beautiful. So I'd highly recommend John Patton's autobiography, awesome. The Missionary to the New Hebrides. It sounds, it sounds um, exciting as yeah, well. Yeah, right. um, okay, so you'll be back next week to finish up for the year with us. Yes. And um, so tell me a, um, give me a little look into where we're, are we going to continue to move in Philippians? Yeah, you know, we won't cover all the rest of it, but we'll cover um, the subject of contentment. Mm -hmm. How and Paul how nice that goes with anxiety. I know. Great. So, well, yeah. <laughs> it was a pleasure to have you back today. Look Thanks. forward to next week. And thank you for joining us today for Postscript. We'll see you back here next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org forward slash postscript.